One of the easiest ways to improve your photography is by simplifying your images. It's advice that's been given for years. Take a picture, simplify it, it'll probably be a lot better. But is there a point where an image becomes too simple? Let me show you what I mean. This video is sponsored by Vera. So I have been thinking a lot about simplification recently. I visited a whole load of new locations where I have no idea what compositions are there. And today's one of those occasions. This is the first time I've been here and I've got no idea what I'm looking for. As a result, simplification is the only way I'm gonna get any decent photos. Um, and I think I've just managed to catch some birds flying past that really simple tree over there in that field of canola, which is what actually attracted me to here today. I was working near here recently, and as I drove through, there was just these golden fields full of yellow. That's where I'm heading towards now along this path. This is actually part of the Offers Dyke path that uh, traverses the length of Wales. Uh, I've done quite a bit of this walk uh, over the years because it's one of the most picturesque hikes in all of the UK. I mean, wherever you hike in the UK is going to be gorgeous, but because this one sort of snakes through Wales, you're guaranteed to get some good images somewhere. So as a result, one of the easiest ways of giving yourself the best chance of getting some good photos is just by thinking simple, simple, simple. And it led me to ask the question, where is that line? Where does an image go from a simple piece of art to an image that you might see hanging on an office wall? That's the distinction, I think. And I think I've come up with an answer. But before we get to that, let's talk about why it's so important to simplify your images. Right, so this bridge represents the border crossing from Wales over this river into England. Welcome to Shropshire. Oh, I can already feel my desire for a cup of tea increasing. Where can I get a good brew right here? Having been born and raised in a farming community, I absolutely love the patterns that you get at this time of year. As the farmers engage in all their work, like they've been cutting these fields of grass to turn it into hay. It generates a lot of patterns and I think that's really conducive to having simple photos because one of the main reasons you want to simplify your photos is so that the viewer really knows what it is they're looking at. And if you can use patterns to lead their eye to a subject, that makes a massive difference. As soon as you introduce something like clutter around the edges of your frame, or something that just doesn't contribute to the picture at all, that becomes an extra element that distracts the viewer completely from what they are supposed to be looking at. That really isn't what we want. The main goal of simplification is stripping away anything that doesn't directly contribute to your picture. If you do that, that's what really distinguishes somebody that's a good photographer from somebody that's a very amateur photographer. Anyway, I better move on because uh, I'm right outside somebody's house. These paths are always weird when they go straight past somebody's house. I'll see you in a minute. Look at this absolute monster of a dock leaf. For comparison, my hands are pretty massive. I've got a reputation for having big hands. Imagine the nettle stings you could saw out with that. There's one for my British fans. Well, how's this for timing? Two buzzers have just landed on this dead tree over this field. Perfectly spaced apart on the third line from each other. Not the most artistic photo, but uh, definitely the right place at the right time. Not very often you get to see two buzzards together. This trail has got some of the most beautiful gate crossings I've ever seen. Come through here and you've got this gorgeous bluebell path that walks through here. It's a shame there's no composition, but um, yeah, this is pretty special just to be able to walk along it. So this is what I've actually come in search for today. This is rapeseed oil that we call it in the UK, otherwise known as canola in some countries. I'm going to carry on calling it canola because uh, I don't want this money to be demonetized because YouTube's algorithm has mistaken one word I've said for another. But anyway, this particular crop is used for bio oil and it's really, really popular this year. Loads of farmers, especially in the area I live, have been growing it because the price of oil has gone so high that they've assumed that the price of bio oil is going to be uh, really high as well. So they've produced loads of this because they think it's going to be profitable. And that's made a lot of people's hay fever very, very bad this year. If you're in the UK and you wonder why it's particularly bad, this might be the reason because the pollen off this is really strong. But this stuff is absolutely fantastic for photography. This just carpet of yellow for as far as the eye can see makes some opportunities for really, really good photos. Now the challenge is finding a composition and that's where simplicity comes in. 
let's go and find one. So I'm trying really hard to get some sort of composition here. Uh, on this side, you've got lovely purple bluebells with this path in the middle and the bluebells are contrasting perfectly with the yellow of this canola on the left hand side but trying to find a composition is really difficult i'm having to walk on this grass here and uh the problem i'm facing is that i can't obviously don't want to ruin this crop for the farmer that he's worked hard to make uh, but also the more left i go the better the composition because it creates more of a leading line through now i'm not sure if it really works as a composition I'm also using my polarizer as well, uh, in case you're wondering, because if you've watched any of my videos before on polarizers, you'll know that it's one of the best ways of bringing out the color. It's always good to have a little look behind you when you're on these trails, because you never know what you're gonna see. The issue I'm facing here is I really, I really like this composition. I love that you've got these trees up here, uh, the canola on the right hand side, the leaded line. The problem is this is big old white bit up here, the clouds. And this situation is just a big empty space. It doesn't actually contribute to the photo. That means that this photo isn't simple. And so we come to the part of the video where we talk about oversimplification. And this is the fine line that we have to walk. One of the main ways a photo can be oversimplified is if there's no distinct subject. Now here in the middle of these fields, as I'm sure you can see, we are surrounded by this beautiful canola. But in itself, it doesn't make a subject. So if you were to just take a picture of a field, there's a canola. It's very pretty. It's a beautiful colour. It's very simple. But it's not a composition and it's not art. There's no distinct subject. And because of that, it's an oversimplified photo. The way I usually gauge these sort of photos is, would you see it hanging on an office wall? Sometimes they'll have pictures hanging on the wall and very rarely are they pieces of art. They don't want their workers being distracted by pieces of art on the wall. They just want simple, nice, pretty pictures. Generally, there's not much thought or composition to them. They're very, very simplified, oversimplified. Whereas if you have a distinctive subject that you're taking a picture of, a leading line, some trees, elements that balance the image, that is the fine line that we have to find. Where is it too simple and where is it just simple enough that we have the subject and the viewer really knows what they're looking at. You wouldn't think of uh, photography as a, an extreme sport, but sometimes... You have to walk the most dangerous of paths to get the best composition. And a good morning to you too, sir. Well, viewers, I uh, survived that deadly bit of road glad to know well i hope you're glad anyway you might be absolutely gutted but now it's time to get back and look at those pictures in lightroom for the last and probably the most important part of not oversimplifying your pictures oh man i don't normally get hay fever this time of year but even i struggled in that all that canola man you could just smell it it was so intense anyway i've got home for a couple of hours now and i managed to look through some of the pictures the light was a little bit harsh by the end i wish i'd be able to get to those canola fields a bit earlier but um that's just how it goes sometimes the walk was longer than i anticipated so i missed out on the best light i've picked up a few compositions to go back for and i want to use this picture here my favorite picture from the morning to demonstrate my final point about oversimplifying your pictures and one key element of that but before i do i want to talk a little bit about the inspiration that you get when it comes to simple images. Now, there are a mass of photographers out there. So many people that you can follow on social media, watch on YouTube, and you can be bombarded with so many images. It's tough to know what's actually a good picture and what isn't sometimes. And the litmus test I found for that is, what is it that is an instant like for me? And generally I found when I see someone's picture, I instantly like it if it's really, really simple. The photographers I tend to take most of my inspiration from are people who themselves know how to really simplify a picture down. And one of the best places I've found for finding inspiration with when it comes to photography is in this week's sponsor, which is Vero. Now, if you don't know who Vero are, they're trying to be the next generation of social media. Social media that actually cares about people rather than profit. A lot of social media now is all based around algorithms, adverts, and trying to feed that to as many people as possible. It's a really good business model. It's worked really well. But we're also starting to realize the effect that's having both on uh, creativity and on mental health. But Vero 
they very much lead in towards the social aspect of social media. And that's especially true of the photography on Vero. Now, some of the most inspirational artists I follow are on Vero. If I'm ever feeling like I'm lacking in motivation or inspiration, I know I can always go to Vero and look through their many tabs and find something that will light my fire for photography. And whether that's street photography, landscape photography, uh, portrait photography, there's a whole variety of different forms of photography on there. And the great thing is that it helps you to build connections with other photographers as well. And one of the best ways I found of improving my work is by taking that inspiration from other photographers, applying the things that they can teach, like the simplicity, and then using that in my own work. If you want to follow me on Vero, there's a link in the description and I'd love to see you on there. Now, when it comes to that final point about oversimplifying your pictures, there's one thing that you can take it too far with. And that's when you start removing the important things. Now, as I said earlier in the video, when I was out in the field, the art when it comes to simplifying photos is in taking everything away that isn't important to the picture. That is the line. And there's a very easy way of demonstrating that with today's pictures. Now, as you know, one of the most important things with today was the color. There was vivid color everywhere. And that's really what drew me to this location. One of the easiest ways of simplifying your pictures is by making them black and white. It's been used for decades now, black and white photography, to really pare down a picture and concentrate on shape and composition. I love that, that's really great. But in this situation, a black and white photo would completely ruin what's important about it. The important elements in this photo are the tree, the bird, the hazy background, and the color of the canola that was in the field. If I was to make that picture black and white, it would completely remove that color element. It would still have the important elements and probably still be quite a good picture, but it wouldn't show the viewer what I intended for them to see. If you can walk up to that line and regularly get it right, then you really will be a good photographer. I'll see you next time.